Okay, awesome. <laughs> okay, I'll share my screen. Wait, just let me see all everything that I have to share. <laughs> So many tabs open, it sort of confusing. <laughs> okay, I got it. Okay, perfect. So, and this is uh, this is the um, you know just started building off of Hello World Builder. Just changed the uh, you know whatever these like whatever is going to be displayed to the user. So, and I have a very simple HTTP server that's running. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I think it's running on. Okay, do you want to see my Chrome? Yep. Yeah, yeah, we can. So, just a second. So, so, to just get a background again, uh, you have a API which is uh, uh, which is sending out cloud events. Um. So this is just pulling um the this is pulling uh, jenkins native apis like rust apis so there's you know i um i can also pull up the endpoint this is this is the starting point and then it goes further into the other uh if if, if, if the job is building it will go to have a job and you just So, you know, it's going to start from and it's, if, if it's the job is building, let's go into um, the, the native jobs API and see the particular information, you know, what build is building, if it's completed, uh, if it's in queue, or the description of the job and stuff like that. And finally, there's also the other particular, like that is not what I use right now, but I'm really thinking about using it to get information about the build itself, which would be the API for the build. I do not have, I, I was looking into Tekton's, um, every event that Tekton is emitting or is like similar events and it has events for, if I'm talking about a task or a job itself, so there's when a job has started, when a job is failed, when the job is um, building or running. So, you know, this is uh, just, demonstrating again going back to the um, server itself. And you know, this is not perfect. This is just a test. The polling is really, really bad right now. The, the timing and everything it needs to uh, get better. But this is a good start. Wait, wait, okay, is this running? Okay, yes. Um, so, you know, this is the data. This is like the cloud events data that has the source. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, if I was to click on it, if I am to click on it, <laughs> okay, it works, amazing. Um, so this is just, you know, the job is building. Uh, and we have the new one. Um, 
whatever, and then this is the data itself. You know, the law can go into the data that we want, but uh, since this is a simple job, I was not really sure what, what all can I put in. You know, we have the URL, we have the, I can put in actions. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, actually, this is something I wanted to ask you guys, was what um, actions usually are telling about a job? I'm not sure if build actions are important at this point. I think when it comes to build actions, we might have to ask someone who is so uh, a little more experienced in that. So we should probably approach someone in Jenkins who's uh, who knows more about build actions. But what we can do at this point is this is like a very good start. Um, we can figure out we can figure out what other CE type fields that we would like to fill for the cloud events itself. Mm -hmm. So right now you are filling up what are fields over there. So right now there is the job name, there is um, the, the, the number, like the build number itself. Uh, and then obviously you have the URL that's going to the source of wherever it is generating from. Uh, and it, I am trying to build uh, the the event for whenever a job has ended, which is a bit tricky, but over there, it would be sort of if the result is success or if the result is failure. Uh, I've, I've been working on that a bit, not a lot, but I'm researching on how we can uh, start with the event of what happens when a job builds. You know, this, like, this is a bit of polling the API issue because I thought it would be easy if you're using Jenkins REST API client for Java, but I don't know. It's it's natively inside of Jenkins plugin that's giving me the error. If I run the code outside of it, it, it works fine. But I, when I move it inside of Jenkins, I'm ge I'm getting um, several maven dependency issues. So I just thought, okay, now I'm just going to write an API polar, and then we can work around that. But I'm not sure if that's the best way. Have you uh, seen the code for the webhook trigger plugin? Uh, for the what? For the webhook trigger plugin. Uh, yeah, I I looked at it a little bit, but not not a lot. Like not entirely. I was not able to, you know, there were a lot of things and I was not able to uh, really get my head around it because what I had like starting with things and this was a lot of things. Um, but it's something that I'm like looking in as a part of the research for just. So, um, as far as I know, uh, I think, yeah, the webhook trigger plugin gives an endpoint to receive an HTTP request on. So, if if you want, we could sit down and kind of, you know, just go through the code and figure out how it's doing it. Just like read the code wherever you might have problems. So while you're reading the code, you can just ping any one of us and ask like, what is this part of the code? What what yeah. it might be doing? And there are, and I'm, I'm sure the author of the plugin might be around, but. I don't think we might need to go there just right now, but we can start just kind of like reading the code and figure out how it's doing that first. Kind of just like, you know, doing a dummy implementation on our side. Um, so I think that's going to relate more to um, Jenkins consuming cloud events, right? Yes. But yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I thought you were trying to pull it from the, uh, from Jenkins yeah. to read. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's like when I say pooling, I think it's more for me to just understand all the different endpoints within Jenkins and how can we get that information that we need. For example, when a build has started, um, there's not, not like an exact information that says, okay, this has started now and this is running now. So just the differentiating between mm -hmm. build and then building a build or like running of a build 
and then finally when a build has ended like that exact and that exact point like that exact and whenever build ends i know that we can go into an, one another of um api that's going to be information about the build and that says okay the build has finished but just no, under i understand now what you're saying so i got so i was completely yeah off point then um so in this case you want to understand from jenkins itself like when a build starts and ends like those exact moments like those events in jenkins inside which you can read properly so that's what you want to know okay yeah because i you know like there's so much yet yes there's information about like the as i said earlier um going from api json where there's the color and if you just blue that means it's not building yet but it's a job that's present but if it's like blue underscore and may <laughs> it's it, it's like something that's building and then going inside of it just understanding the cloud event that we have to yeah. trigger the job that has it started and then another cloud event to trigger just to say okay the job is running right now yeah. and and then from there going into the build it's i have the code i i i think it i i'm thinking that it should work but it doesn't uh you know i have the code for okay the build has now succeeded or it has now failed um i'm not entirely sure why but i am trying to understand how that the entire like polling system is working and inside of let me send something through you uh, just let me know if this helps i'm just sending it on the chat is this something you've tried okay this is bookmark <laughs> yeah yeah Uh, this was something I had added to the or design document, I think, at some point. I think, but uh, yeah, this is something that could help probably because uh, they've they've already implemented this so uh, kind of you know listening mechanism where you know on finished or like started they do certain things so. Could probably get some inspiration from here and just extend it to kind of support cloud events. Yeah. Um, do you think that like would you happen to know why isn't the, the Jenkins Rust API Java client working? Like, I'm pretty sure there might be an issue with my. system itself because it might be trying to find different dependencies i did look into the tree and i did not find any different dependencies for like maven but i it, you know if we were using it it would have been so much easy to just pull and um get whatever we need but i get all the send you to so uh, are you trying to uh, do this like you, you are you Sorry, my bad. It's just too noisy here. Um. So, are you trying to pull the endpoint from the plugin itself? Like you're trying to pull the Jenkins endpoint from the plugin? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. So, uh, yeah. um, that would be good as a initial starting point, mm -hmm. but it would be nice to have something that hooks into the uh. eventing mechanism within jenkins itself where we get to know you know if something started or failed mm -hmm. um so you could uh one sec one sec sorry my bad <laughs> okay so yeah i was saying um to start i think it's like a pretty easy thing to like kind of just you know pull the rest api endpoint and see what is the state of the job at at a certain point 
but uh, ideally it should like hook into the uh, eventing within jenkins itself and then you know send out events that way otherwise if you think about it then we are doing like a two way thing we are first going to poll and like upon some change if we see a change we are going to keep uh, we are going to keep, keep doing that if there is a change then we'll send something else out so there's like a two way thing happening on two different directions so instead you want it to go in like a smooth single like flowing fashion so like if something happens then the plugin gets to know and then like internally and the plugin will send out the cloud event yeah i think that makes more sense and i think that yeah. can also solve some issues with the polling itself um, and like the life cycle of the polling is pretty dependent on the usage of the plugin you'll always have that thread be running in the background otherwise for polling and it could you can you can see that as a overhead in one way and easy way to kind of get rid of that would be to kind of just hook into this internal jenkins eventing of which the statistics gatherer plugin has figured out and i am just like uh speaking based on what i've just seen in these plugins i haven't implemented it as such but this is something for you to look at and think about and see what works best for you right so um like in the architecture pattern that you are saying um we should look into is like an external system inside of outside of the plugin but as a part of jenkins and so so how is that going to look like for a user who wants to implement this plugin um we am just because what i have right now mm -hmm. is sort of that like the user is going to enter the url for this sync i'm sorry i wasn't able to show that part but it's like already configured on my system so it's just like the user enters a url for this sync and as soon as like you know as job is started the polling starts um as well and then similar to that mm -hmm. as soon as like the polling starts you know, the events mm -hmm. are being edited to wherever the url is and stuff so i'm just thinking of how would it look like uh, they could so the url for the sync mm -hmm. would be outside the sync is obviously outside jenkins right right and the sync is where all the events would end up from jenkins mm -hmm. so you would be doing kind of like a post request on that sync initially mm -hmm. with http right yes. mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean that, yeah that's what like i had in the http server that i'm running right now um it's just receiving post requests from jenkins like the the, the jenkins plugin but like what i'm trying to understand is if we move the system out like the polling system itself outside of the plugin i think that's i think i might have to read on that to understand the architecture better um i'm getting a little confused uh i'm just trying to understand so uh, when you when you talk about polling in this case the polling is being done by the plugin mm -hmm. yeah it's like it's being done inside of plugin so yeah it's um so as soon as i'm like running the plugin you know as soon as that that as soon as a person adds a plugin into their like a user enters a plugin into their system um it's going to like obviously then it becomes a part of their infrastructure hmm. and, and 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 like pulling starts right at that moment so as soon as a person like clicks on build now it, it continuously pulling the apis which yeah. are which like i have i have in the code 
And then, you know, whatever it figures out, depending on how it is pulling, it is going to send a um, an event to the sync that I have configured, which is outside of Jenkins, like an HTTP sync. Hmm. So currently, how have you written the polling right now? So the polling is working against the job when it starts, that's all? Um. Well, it's running. It's like, okay, so I have the... Uh, So basically it's as like as I said earlier, it's a starting from the API, the, like the first API, which is it's like API JSON, which just gives information about the Jenkins system, like the number of cores, the number of jobs which are in the system at that moment. Um, and then if it figures out that the if a certain job is building based on the color of the job, then it's going to be further and then it starts um, the other one, which is like looking in the job itself. So the, the test jobs, when I started it and it figured out, okay, the test job is running, then it went in and then it looked, it looked into, okay, what number of the job or like what is the number of the job, the build number that's building, the, the name, the description and everything. Um, so then it returns the event when it figures out, okay, the job is willing and here's the number, here's the name, here's the description. And I also have like a bit of code for when it ends. I mean, it's not different, it's just like going a step further into the build itself and seeing if it's still building or if like the build itself is it still building or if it has stopped building and then um, generate another event, which would be okay, the build has failed or the build. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it makes sense. One sec. I'm so sorry about this one sec. <laughs> You're fine. Man. Yeah, my bad. The maid is here, so it's like really noisy right now in the house. So it's <laughs> okay. So um, yeah, it makes sense. So um, I think this this uh, this mini demo was like a good place to start. But imagine now at scale, like if you have a lot of jobs that you're pulling for using the plugin. Mm -hmm. The plugin will have so many threads running in the background for each different job that is there. Like it will at some point be like a large overhead created by the plugin uh, for all of these. So just it, like in like in my head when I think about it, just is uh, a good place to start. But we have to think at some point of like somehow getting this, uh, you know, in a, a singular, like, like straightforward fashion where the events kind of triggers the cloud event. The event within Jenkins will tr trigger cloud event. Like mm -hmm. you have to, that's why you have to understand like how these smaller things in Jenkins work somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, like the build step listener, like I'm looking at the build step listener over here the build step is extend. So in the starts plugin, the build step starts listener, which extends a build step listener is a Jenkins class itself. So it's uh, it comes under Hudson model build step listener. Similar, mm -hmm. we could use that. And similarly, there is a, a run starts listener. And there is a, there is, there is a, a class called run listener, which is being used for this one. And this one, yeah. and I think run over here means a build run itself. So in this case, they are getting the 
uh, run which is happening at that time and it says okay if the run is started if it's in progress if some if environment variables are there so a lot of information is being picked up from these listeners themselves so mm -hmm. so i think as a next a step it would be a good place to see if like you can kind of reimplement this in to have a uh, cloud events be sent by these listeners so upon start of a job you start a, you send a cloud event saying that okay there is a cloud event uh, this build is started and there's a cloud event for it and uh, right now you are using an http server so for listening to these cloud events or like for the sync right mm -hmm. like you can you can just use the same thing and uh, try it out does that make sense do you think it's like probably the better next step or uh, do you have something else you would like to try yeah i think um yeah i think that makes a lot of sense and this um the statistics gather plugin i think it looks like a great place to get an idea of how they are implementing it um yeah i think like this is like a really good place and definitely can um you know implement like start implementing this and like testing out with the the emittance part of the cloud events and if we have that down you know it the space we'll have an idea of how just working with cloud events and jenkins can look like so i think the other step would be easy the easier That's great. Very frankly, I'm very impressed that we've already reached like sync state to like testing this out because this was supposed to be only like community bonding, chatting, and like you know mini party time that we have, you know, figuring out who what this is about and getting to know each other and stuff. But yeah, this is great. We already reached the state and awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's, I was, let's also do we that. We wanted this to start in a month, so. i'm just sitting here drinking orange juice thinking i wouldn't have to think of this so but yeah this is great this is great work awesome shruti thank you yeah i yeah i think we'll we'll just move the community bonding towards the end so we'll just yeah. finish early and take all the time yeah. to bond <laughs> yeah I think that'll be that'll be more fun because then we, you know, we don't have work to do and it's just like bonding and party. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Uh, I have a feeling that you'll be in deep till the end. That you will be talking to probably like other communities and fig figuring stuff out we wouldn't even have heard of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's see how that goes yeah but this is great um let me know how that goes then for you uh, with the build listener stuff um and yes kara like i found this project while i was uh, writing the design doc and um, it just seemed like the perfect thing like this is exactly what you are trying to do all we need to do is send cloud events that's all yeah yeah and it's just uh it's just pretty straightforward when you look at statistics card though yeah it's it's a great it's a great starting point and you are you are doing awesome shruti i'm so impressed as well um the only this is not this is not your work this is vis-a-vis -vis jenkins and some of the code you will see internally from the from the user's perspective at this point there are certain words that shouldn't be showing anymore um certain old, older terminology which we're removing from the project like a uh, master slave. So in your own work that you're writing instead of using a word like slave if you use agent that would be great and I will get you the complete um list of word uh replacements that we're using so that it's it's done 
correctly. But if you just start off that way, then it's nice because then you don't have to mm -hmm. go back and change your words. <laughs> and yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I'll just maybe ask you guys once again about the event itself. Um, I know that we have been, like, let's look into how or like what events is Tekton emitting. And as I said, uh, about jobs itself, there can be when a job is started, when a job is building, when a job succeeded, like the job is ended and it succeeded and the job failed. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that you know, the um, starting part, like the job has started and a job is building needs to be two separate events? Or do you think like, you know, a job is started and when the other event is emitted, which would be a job is failed or a job is succeeded, it would kind of cover that space of a job is building? Well, it's good that you're thinking in this way uh, at this point. But to start, it would be a good place to completely map out all the events sent out by Jenkins first and then map them out to like a larger context. So in Tekton, what they've done, they've done something similar. They've, they've, they have this event type called unknown, which, which is kind of like condition passing kind of like an event type. Uh, let me send you the Tekton cloud event table. I don't know why I'm typing with one hand. <laughs> okay, so uh, Tekton cloud events, they, they've got this uh, cloud event type, especially for unknown, where if a condition is changing, they really don't know what's happening there. So they called it unknown, not condition changing. So in such times where there is not, there's a certain event which is not explicitly being uh, given out by Jenkins, We'll have to use terminology like unknown. So it is good to document these things and mm -hmm. kind of for us to get a clear idea of what we are trying to do in terms of you know mapping out how the Jenkins job life cycle is showing itself in terms of events and we mark something like you know Jenkins job is starting or like completing is like unknown. Mm -hmm. But while naming these, we have to be sure that you know we are not reflecting. Uh, what Jenkins is already uh, saying. Because if we reflect them like inaccurately, we mm -hmm. kind of give the impression mm -hmm. that, you know, Jen this is what Jenkins is saying, but this is not actually what Jenkins is saying because Jenkins is probably not saying anything at that point. So it's to start off, it will be good to like just map all these events that are being created by Jenkins directly onto cloud events and then later on figure out with them, okay, what is missing over here? And then we can like add certain things here, you know, unknown events that are that aren't there, which probably are there, but are happening in the background and we just don't know. So, and those also might need, you know, a different mechanism of uh, sending. Probably if it is not directly told by Jenkins itself, how do we figure out if it's in that state? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you say map out like Jenkins events, um, is there like a specific guide to, okay, here are all Jenkins events or just like map out as in um, just like mentally just understand what is happening and then sort of write it down? Or is there like a specific, okay, this is, this yeah, is what we think about that would be just take each Jenkins resource that exists, resource type, and mm -hmm. see if a listener on those type exists, a listener on each type would exist, and for each listener, see what mm -hmm. event is emitted. So you, at that point, you know, like, okay, these are all the mappings that I need to do. And this is the of, like the life cycle of these resources. Because there are not resources just for like jobs and builds and stuff, there are resources for projects. And uh, I think for views and these very Jenkinsy things that are there. So actually, let me see if I can pull that out. Yeah, 
Yeah, I will also start um, editing the, the page for cloud events on Jenkins Stock project site, just so that all of us plus people outside of um, you know, our team can just be in the same loop. Sorry, I didn't catch you there. What are you saying? Um, wait, what? I didn't get you. What are you saying? Yeah, I just, yeah, I just said that the, I'll start editing the, the GSOC, our, like our project page in Jen, Jenkins GSOC. Mm -hmm. So, we all know that where we are in terms of progress and also people outside of the team. Oh, that's so helpful. <laughs> Thanks, Simone, that's so helpful. Yeah, I think I looked at a similar thing earlier, but it was all terminology related to a job. <laughs> yeah, this might be helpful. Mm. I don't know to I don't know to what extent, but uh, like I don't know if and like some of these like cloud executor workspace even have listeners of their own. But it'll be a good place to. I think I really feel like uh, the Hudson model listeners package, which is there. Uh, you could just like check what all listener, what all listener classes are there under there, and that's mm -hmm. probably the best place you could figure out. You know how to uh, from where you can like map map these cloud events. That's probably the best place you know, because this is just documentation. And documentation mm -hmm. sometimes isn't like the source of truth, it's the code itself. So you can just probably look at those listener classes. Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna try all of these listener classes out if on if I find them. Okay, so I have found, I think there are like six listeners over here, which you could use. And no, yeah, there are five listeners. So there's item listener, run listener, saveable listener, SCM listener, SCM poll listener, but based on what we saw, there are some other listeners as well which we, I don't think we are seeing them over here right now. Do you think this is a good place for your next conquest, Shruti? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think uh, the statistics gather plugin um, and let's make it pass the, the model listeners. I think just um, 
that's that's a really good place actually to get an idea of what we can do. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. I'll have to drop off in a bit. So, uh, is there are there any other burning questions? All right, thanks for, for joining us today. Awesome work, Shruti. You've been amazing in your first week of community bonding, already tackling uh, and exploring the code base and starting your work. So really impressive. Um, I, I have no more questions for today or anything. Any Anything else we need to add or bring up for this meeting? Okay, great. Thank you all. Have a very good week. Thank you, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye.